Hey, this is OXDF. Uh, I was looking through uh, Malware Bazaar today, and there's a ton of executables that have been uploaded, but there was a couple uh, LNK files that I thought kind of interesting. I haven't seen LNK files used in the wild in a while. Um, I'm sure they're always kind of there in as a background, uh, but it's not one of the trending things or whatever. So I thought I'd take a look at it and see what one, at least one of them was doing. Um, it, it was tagged as Cobalt Strike, so I can assume the binary I pull out at the end uh, was Cobalt Strike. Um, we didn't get to quite that depth, but we will pull apart multiple layers of redirection, downloading stuff from a live C2 server. Um, we'll, we're gonna, we, we start by taking a look in Windows, just to peek at what this looks like to the user experience. Um, but then we pivot over to Linux and we do everything there, including PowerShell deobfuscation stuff um, using PowerShell and Linux. So um, I had a little bit of fun. It's, it's a pretty short video, just maybe 15 minutes peek, pulling apart this uh, LNK file. Um, Let's dive in. All right, so I was looking through Malware Bazaar um, and just sort of perusing at what was uploaded today. And, uh, you know, it's it's almost entirely executables. Um, there's an elf here, might be interesting to take a look at, especially since it's un, not tagged as anything. Um, there's one RAR file, some PowerShell. Um, but what caught my eye, and I thought I might take a look at, let's see if we can scroll down here, is, uh, where was it? Okay, right here. Uh, there's these, I don't know what 987654321 is, but the Cobalt Strike, I know what that is. Um, it's a common uh, pen testing framework, um, C2, uh, but link files. And I haven't seen heard a lot about link files as phishing attachments lately. I thought it might be fun to take a look and see. Um, I've not prepped on this, so I don't know if this is gonna turn into a video or not, but I figured I'd record it and we'll see where it goes. Um, I've got a copy of it down here. Um, that there, and I've also got a copy over in uh, a Windows VM right here. I'm um, really careful not to click on it here, although I have turned off my internet in this box. Um, we can take a look at it in properties here, and it's probably kind of a little bit hard for you all to see. I'll see, but uh, you know, here it is. It is a uh, LNK file named this. Um, it's getting this PDF icon, so it's trying to look like a PDF. Um, I believe if we looked in Malware Bazaar, it said something, or I saw somewhere it said something about. Um, Overdue invoice. Oh, right here. Com comment. Overdue invoice 2023 document, right? Um, but, you know, it's going to start this stuff. And we're, we're going to look at this in Linux, so I'm not going to worry about getting too deep, too in depth. Um, where it sets the, uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything particularly change icon. So um, we can see this is pulling an icon from MS Edge, the PDF thing. So that's, that's going to be local on any, it's basically it's saying, you know, go into the, the program files, Microsoft Edge, MS Edge, executable and pull this icon file. So that's where the PDF comes from. Um, so that's gonna be on any Windows system. So it doesn't have to bring that along with it. Um, nothing else too interesting here. Let's, let's, let, we're gonna do this in Linux, really. Um, so let's go back here. Um, there's a file, there's a tool we can use called uh, link parse three. Um, it's pip install at capital L N K capital P A R S E three. Uh, and that gives you this link parse utility, which we can then run on this. And it gives us all sorts of good stuff here. Um, let's skip through here. So targets, my computer, nothing. Going back to the bottom here. Uh, the most interesting part, right? So here's the description, overdue 2023 invoice. Um, it's going to work out of the syswow PowerShell directory, but it's gonna load uh, PowerShell.exe with these command line arguments, which is basically going to invoke a web request to this direct to this website, um, use basic parsing, uh, expand the content, and pipe the results into PowerShell. Uh, there's our icon location again, so we're all good there. Um, so let's go ahead and grab, and we're, you know, we're going to do this from a place we're comfortable. We're going to w get this text file, and we got it. Um, not too worried about anything it can do to me here, and we've got clearly like some more PowerShell, some obfuscated PowerShell, right? So the IEX at the front is clearly going to invoke expression. So whatever is whatever comes out from between these uh, parentheses is going to be run as PowerShell. Um, the cool thing about that means, well, so what this means basically is um, this is a common way of obfuscating where basically it says, oh, get the 23rd uh, item out of this following you know, array, uh, then get the 97th, 68th, and it's just all jumbled up. Um, and then there's some replaces going on down here. The cool thing is we can pretty safely, I'm gonna just sort of glance through this real quick, but um, we can pretty safely come through here and say, this is all just generating a string and then it's gonna IE exit. So what if we, we can go back to our Windows VM or I can just use PowerShell on my Linux VM actually. 
If we paste this in and run it, um, this is the string that would have been executed, but because we didn't put IEX in front, it just prints it, right? So now we have the next, we have the deobfuscated version of what it does. Um, we can grab this, let's see. So it's going to get, W is going to be a new web client. BS is going to be the download string of this next download. We're going to grab that for sure. Um, then we're going to, let's see. So let's go ahead and grab that. Um, will W get this? Okay, still got it. Um, File on jump dot that ASCII text cat jump dot that. Okay, so it looks kind of like base sixty four, but there's a bunch of like weird uh, other characters here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to bs dot replace. So three uh, dashes becomes a b, uh, bang becomes a capital L, at becomes an n, etc. Um, so let us let's see, so all that happens, then it's going to go through here. So, so that's going to be right here. This line right here is going to be from base 64 string, this thing. So it's going to do, take BS. It's going to do all that replacing. Then it's going to, uh, convert it from base 64 into X, which will just be an array of bytes. Um, then it's going to loop over these bytes for I, I is less than X dot count I plus plus. And for each one of them, it's going to XOR it by 85. Uh, and then it's going to turn it back into a string and IE exit. So um, from within, let's see, we can do this. Let's grab this right here. Copy, come back up. So we can say dollar sign BS is equal to, paste that in. And now let's make this bigger. So we can know that we can see like, grab this right here. So we can see like, what is this replace gonna do? Um, it's going to turn it back into base 64. So that's cool. Okay. So let's actually, we can actually, um, get X here without any risk to ourselves. So I think we missed a closing parenthesis. So now we have dollar sign X, which I think is going to be a huge, uh, it's going to probably print just a long list of numbers. Yeah. Let's see. Can we get our, let's get this stuff back on the screen. Okay. So now, now we have this long list of numbers, bytes, right? Now we want to go, we want to run this for loop ourselves to get the X, uh, uh, XOR to get each thing in it, XOR. And so we'll run that loop. And now if we run, we could, we could do our X again, but it's just going to give us a long list of different numbers, right? So that's not exactly what we want to see. Um, we want to turn that back into a string. So let's grab that. And we'll do this. And so now we have another stage. This is fun. Um, we're getting into onions here. Um, so we're going to have a URL. We're going to download the URL slash invoice.pdf. And that's going to save to you to the downloads folder. Um, and then we're going to uh, start process that we're actually going to open the PDF. Um, and so this looks, this could be a malicious PDF. We'll take a look at it, but it could also just be um, a decoy document. Um, the new web, then we have another download file, and this time we're going to download temp.zip, and we're going to save that into our temp directory. Um, and then we're going to expand archive the zip into temp. We're going to make it hidden. Uh, we're going to remove the zip file. We're going to sleep for three seconds. And then we're going to run runtimebroker.exe. So uh, let's take a look. We can wget this and uh oh that's not useful let's i don't know what that is. well let's see file zib vim zib oh look at that they left um <laughs> they left uh uh directory listing on so you can see here um let's see this download string is getting, oops, sorry, where are we in the light? We've lost, I'm losing track of all these ones, all these downloads. So this URL, we're gonna download URL slash invoice.pdf. Uh, and then we're gonna download later URL slash, where was it? Uh, URL slash temp200.zip. But uh, it looks like they left directory monitoring on, so we can download each of these. Um, save link as. Uh, what is the easiest way? We'll just do, here we go. So we have our invoice, invoice 2000. Um, interestingly, there's an invoice 3000, or a temp, sorry, temp 3000 here as well. Um, that was not referenced in the, 
in the uh, PowerShell. So we'll save that as well and take a look. Um, I am going to, I have a snapshot of this VM very recently. I'm going to just make sure, I'm going to go ahead and turn, um, oops, that's the wrong, turn networking off. So that just in case there's something in this PDF that's strange, it doesn't mess me up. Disconnect the NIC here. Okay. Um, and we can actually, let's actually take a look at, let's open that and from here, um, no, I call it K. I've got this, this really feels like a decoy document, right? So here's our Macintosh laboratory. Um, doesn't charging us some money. We owe $300, uh, nothing super exciting there. Um, we could run. I don't, know if I, have, I don't even know if I have it on this computer, let's, on this VM, let's see. Um, Python opt DA Stevens PDF, uh, let's do PDF ID. And then boys stuff PDF, and we can see, so there's objects, streams, end stream, page, um, none of the scary stuff you'd expect. So if this was a malicious PDF, I would expect to see like some launches or some open actions, some JavaScript, something that there that's going to do something, something that can get, you know, more than just present a static document. Um, but this looks very much just like a static document. So uh, pretty clear this is a, um, a decoy document. Let's, we, can, we, can, we, can get, we can kind of ignore that and move on. Um, oops, let's see. I guess we can, we can do that within PowerShell. Um, unzip minus L temp. 200. So there's our runtime broker. We saw, um, if we come back up here, we saw in our download that that was what we were, that was the final process we were actually going to start in this malware. Um, if we go back down, we can um, do this with a 300 and it's a runtime broker as well. Um, let's unzip temp 200. Uh, let's move runtime broker to runtime broker dash 200, let's unzip temp 300, md5sum, thar.exe. They're the exact same. So that's nothing, that's not super interesting. Okay, I don't, I don't know why there's two. Um, we'll remove, run, run, well, we don't need the uh, dash 200 one. Um, I'm actually not gonna dive into, um, so we've already know from our bizarre that this is tagged as Cobalt Strike. Um, I don't have a ton of experience actually reversing Cobalt Strike executables. Um, maybe that'd be an interesting thing to learn and look at in a future video. But for now, um, you know, I think we figured out kind of what's going on. Um, we could upload this Cobalt Strike itself. Um, in fact, I wonder if we could do, um, if we take, uh, where's that MD5? I don't know if you can do this in Malware Bazaar or not. Um, these are going to be SHA-256. So let's, let's, let's get the SHA-256 so we can see if it's in there. SHA-256 of runtimebroker.exe. Control F. It is actually not loaded in here. That's interesting. Um, we can come over here to vir virus total. Oh, connect. let me, let me uh, quickly reconnect the internet. There we go, connection back. All right, so if we search here for the hash, we can see it's here. Um, it's been uploaded. It looks clearly like, uh, well, it's just showing generic stuff. It's not actually showing um, that it's necessarily Cobalt Strike. Uh, let's see, from details. I was say, do we get uh, behaviors kind of what I'm looking for, I think. Um, so we do get C2 traffic, so we could potentially block this or look at, you know, look further into this IP address to see, you know, if you're doing this in your work, you'd want to check and see, like, does my firewall, does my, does my gateway show anyone trying to access this IP address? Um, that'd be a good sign that we, you got a problem you want to look into. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, we're, that'd be, that'll be a different video for a different day. Um, if that's something that seems interesting to you, again, I don't know if I know how to do it or not, but we'll, uh, leave me a comment. Let me know if you want me to figure it out or not. Um, 
And uh, otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and call this here. We had an interesting link file that we went through like four or five steps of downloads and uh, obfuscation. And uh, we found presumably a Cobalt Strike executable. So uh, thanks for hanging out with me today. And I will talk to you next time. Oh.